Good morning, brethren. Happy Feast of Trumpets. Uh, go with me to the book of Philippians, chapter one, chapter two. I'm reading from verses one to eleven. Philippians, chapter two. Reading verses one to eleven. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider his robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and become obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Verse nine, therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, and eleven, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm talking on the title, The Heart of Giving. The Heart of Giving in Love, Humility, and Sacrifice. From the passage we have read, it is about Jesus Christ. Now, when we think about giving, or when we think about offering, our mind usually go to money or financial contribution. Even though this morning after this sermon is, we shall be giving our offering. However, I want us to look at giving in a wider scope, especially in the context of the way God has demonstrated giving to us. Now, when we look at giving from the perspective of God, what God gave to us is his only begotten son. He gave up Jesus Christ to die for our sin, the one who knew no sin. And even Jesus that was given to us, I want us to look at some attitudes, some things that Jesus demonstrated that we can learn from. And then that is going to help us in the way we live our life, in the way we conduct ourselves day in, day out, as we await the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Even the Feast of Trumpets that we are celebrating today, it is all about reminding ourselves the hope that we have, that a time is coming in the future when the trumpet will sound and Jesus is going to come down and establish the government of God to replace the current government of man that we have. When you listen to the news, almost every day, you hear about war, you hear about poverty, you hear about suffering. From Nigeria, where I come from, today, an average family is suffering to live, to survive. But all this will be gone. But while we are with the establishment of the government of God here, there are things that God wants us to learn and also live by so that people around us can be able to see that indeed, yes, we are people of God. So once again, I'm looking at the heart of giving. In the context of love, humility, and sacrifice, according to the way 
Jesus Christ has patterned it for us. I'll be looking at this in three parts. Now, first, looking at verses 1 to 4 of the chapter of the passage we read. In verse 1 to 4, Paul begins by urging the Philippians to make his joy complete by being like-minded. Now, in a similar vein, we can make joy, I mean, we can make God to have joy over us by having a like mind like that of Christ. And when we give, let it be out of love, not out of compulsion. Now, I'm actually targeting this sermonette to the youth among us. Now, when I look at the congregation here, and compared with my congregation in Nigeria, there is a stark opposite. In terms of the population of the youth and the elderly. In Nigeria, we have more of the youth. In fact, the people that do song leading are mostly teenagers. And I would like to see teenagers here too, doing such here. And another reason why, one major reason why I'm targeting the youth is this. You know, when you look at the American society, many people, majority, don't have time for God. Majority don't even think about God. But the few youth that we have among us here, I want to encourage you. Do not be like those ones. Learn to know this God by yourself, not just because your parents want you to know him. And when we talk about giving, it's not just all about money. Some youth might say, I am not working yet. I don't have any money to give. There are a lot of things you can do, even in the church. For example, when we celebrated uh, the elderly in the Columbia congregation a few weeks ago, it was a very young girl that organized the whole thing. In fact, I was so elated that, wow, a girl of about maybe in her 20s, organizing a program for those in their 60s. It was highly encouraging. And I want as many other youth that are feeling there is nothing they can do yet to look out for what they can do. Even if you are not appointed to do something, you can ask, approach the pastor, is there anything I can do to be able to render service in the house of God? And the whole essence of giving, let it be out of the love you have for God. And then let it not be for selfish gain. Let it not also be for recognition. Now, perhaps there are some of us that are already doing some things and you are not recognized. Please do not get discouraged. Continue to do it. As scripture says, the God that sees in the secret is going to reward you openly. So brethren, when we approach giving with the mindset of Christ, our giving becomes more than financial contributions. It becomes an act of worship to God and service to God. Second point, the example of Christ's humility. We read in verses five to eight that even though Jesus was in the form of God. He doesn't consider it something that he has to hold on to, that even me, in the position of God, why should I go? Why should I belittle myself and go to that sinful world and go and die for those sinful people, people that have not been living their life to, to honor God? No, he humbled himself. Now, for the elderly, Perhaps you are assigned to do uh, a duty and you are feeling like, what kind of duty is this? It's belittle me. Please, brethren, let us not feel such. There is no service in this house of God that is little, that is small. Because with God, little can become so much. 
Remember the boy that donated his, uh, whether it is his breakfast or his lunch or dinner, we don't know. Two pieces of bread and five fishes. He offered it. And Jesus multiplied it to feed 5,000. If that little boy had felt, oh, this is very small. What can this one do? But he offered it. Remember the widow of Zarephath. Even though there was famine, and she has very little to cook and eat, and then she and her son to die. But Elijah said, prepare some portion for me. And she did, out of faith. So let us not feel that some services are degrading in the house of God. No service is too big, neither is there any service that is too little. Every service in the house of God is honorable, is commendable, and God is going to reward whatever service you give to God. So for this, how does this apply to us? Our giving should mirror Christ's humility. It is not about the amount, but the heart behind what we are giving. Remember, giving is not all about money. It can be your time. It can be your talent. It can be your material things. For example, you are planning to do a project or maybe to get something worth 2,000 Naira. And you see someone needing just 500 Naira to be able to meet his own need. And you are like, no, I'm still trying to gather my 2,000 complete. Let God use you to meet the need of that person. And you'll be surprised that even the 2,000 that you are trying and struggling to gather together, God will surprise you. So let us give with a heart of humility, not for what we are going to gain, but let it be to honor God. So our giving should mirror Christ's humility. It's not about the amount, but the heart behind it. We shall, we, 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 will, we shall be willing to give sacrificially not just from our abundance, but even when it requires a personal cost. Giving at times will require sacrifice. It's going to cost us something. Remember, salvation is free, but it costs somebody's life. It costs God to give his only begotten son. Now, for many people that are born into Christianity, they don't really appreciate that passage, John 3.16, like those of us that were not born into it. You know, in Islam, it is an abomination to say that God has a son or a child. But in Christianity, it is not so. Even from the Old Testament, God has been telling the people of Israel that he wants to be their father. This is love uncommon, love agape, giving that is sacrificial. And this is the kind of heart that Paul is encouraging the people of Philippians and we today to also cultivate and adopt and practice. The last portion, the result of Christ's sacrifice, that is in verses 9 to 11. We should understand that our giving, when done in humility and love, is a testimony of God's grace. It points others to Jesus, who is the source of generosity. And above all, it glorifies God. Our giving should be with the intent to glorify God. Whether we gain something in return or not, it doesn't matter. And there is, let me say, in Nigeria, there are some brethren that felt there is no need to give tithe any longer. Can you imagine that? They said it's only offering that we should give. The reason they don't want to give tithe is because they felt it is the ministers that are using the money. What is your business with how the money is used? God says, bring the tithe into my house. It is for the work of God. If the minister likes, let him consume it lavishly. That is his own business with God. I hope there is no such people here. 
that are thinking, why should I give tight? And some people will sit on it and spend it the way they like. No. Our giving of tight is for God, is for the work of God, is to glorify God and expand his kingdom as we are building the people of God together. Summary. Philippians 2, 1 to 11 challenges us to rethink our approach to giving. It calls us to embrace the attitude of Christ, marked by humility, selflessness, and sacrificial love. And when we give with this heart, our offering and our giving become a powerful expression of God's love and a means to glorify him. Conclusion. Let us always remember God's ultimate gift to man in Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. In our giving at any time, remember, it's not all about money. Let us follow the example of Christ. Let us give, not out of obligation or a desire for recognition, but with a heart full of humility and love. And as we offer our gifts, let it be a reminder that true giving is not about the size of the gift, but the size of the heart behind it. May our offering today not just be a financial contribution, but a reflection of our desire to follow Christ's examples. So now we shall be giving our feast offering. And if you don't have the green envelope, please raise your hand. The ushers will give you one. And uh, let the ushers pass the basket run. And uh, we shall be having an offer tree solo, um, arranged and performed by Stephen Russo. The title is In the Spirit.